Michael, the double tender engine's life on the island of Sodor was full of surprises. He was frightened with passengers, and still, he remained very, very jealous and a little stubborn. One day, Gordon had just finished all his jobs, and he was just bringing his last express train into Knackford Station, while James was uh, shunting freight cars into their sidings. Hello, Gordon. I see Go I see Michael left behind his passengers again. I'll have to make a special journey with it, I suppose, grumbled Gordon. Anyone would think I had nothing to do. Tell you what, went on James. I'll take Michael's passengers, and you go fetch one of my freight trains. James had a lot of work to do, and Gordon was going to do one of them. Secretly, Keith Gordon thought it was a good idea, but deep di but he didn't think it but he didn't think it was dignified. He decided to give it a try to get it over with and get back to his dignity. He was pleased it was only one freight train. The drivers and station master had to agree. Gordon had never learned how to shunt freight cars at all. He began to order them about. Hurry along, he said. The freight cars grumbled to each other. This is James's place. Gordon's got no right to poke his funnel up here and push us around. They all whispered and passed the word. Pay Gordon out! Pay Gordon out! Come along, said Gordon. No nonsense. We'll give him nonsense, giggled the freight cars to each other. But they followed so quietly that Gordon didn't hurt a single thing. Then they saw a notice ahead. All trains stopped to pin down brakes. Brakes, conductor, please! But before he could check them, the freight cars surged ahead. On! On! they cried. Help! Help! shouted Gordon. The man on duty rushed to warn traffic with his red flag, but it was too late to send Gordon onto the runaway siding. Apparently trying to grip the rails, Gordon skidded on the wrong track. Boop! Boop! Watch out! The brake van was in smithereens. Gordon's driver and fireman had jumped clear, but Gordon was stranded. Next day, Sir Toppin had arrived. James and Michael had helped to clear the damage, but still, Gordon remained on his perch of freight car. We must now try, said Sir Toppin Hat, to run the, the main line with James and the big black engine. You have put us in an awful predicament, Gordon. I'm sorry, sir, said Gordon sadly. You must stay here until we're ready, continued Sir Toppin Hat, and you really must be more careful with freight cars no matter how undignifying it is. Gordon sighed. The freight cars groaned beneath his wheels. He quite understood about awful predicaments. Sir Toppin Hat spoke severely to Michael, too. My engines work hard, he told him. If, and your jealousy is causing a lot of trouble. I might send you away. Michael was ashamed. However, James said you helped to clear the wreckage. So you shall have another chance. Thank you, sir. I will work hard. James says he'll help me. Excellent. What James doesn't know about the main line is not worth knowing. Next day, Henry came home. And Gordon was sent to be mended. Thomas and Percy were delighted to see Henry again, and 
Henry did Gordon's work while he was away. All were now great friends, and James has taught Michael a great deal, too. He pulled passengers all by himself without making a mistake. That's how an engine does it, isn't it?